Hello, I'm Tony from Bonner's Music and this is my feature review and keyboard player's guide to the new Kurzweil K2700 keyboard workstation. I'm going to explain some of the most important features of this top of the range keyboard, but most importantly, I will be doing lots of playing to show you the sounds. So make sure you've got a nice pair of headphones or good quality speakers attached to the device on which you're watching this video so you hear every detail of the sound that this monster keyboard can produce. At the time of recording, the K2700 has just arrived to us at Bonners here in the UK and we have them in stock. You'll find links to the latest pricing information in the description below this video and also details of our part exchange offer so you can trade in your existing keyboard and upgrade to a K2700 as quickly and as easily as possible. Oh and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons so you're notified every time I release a new keyboard or stage piano review video. So let's get started and take a look at what this new workstation from Kurzweil can offer keyboard musicians. So let's just jump in straight away with uh, some playing and I'm just going to play one of the piano sounds and this is called the Dynamic 9 Foot Grand and it's an absolutely beautiful sound. So as you could hear, it's an absolutely beautiful piano sound, but it's not just about the sound, it's also the keyboard as well. And it's the way the two things interact with each other. Now we have here an 88 note, fully weighted hammer action, triple sensor keyboard, and it picks up every nuance of your playing. Um, and it really is very, very responsive to perform with. Now, I just want to explain a little bit about how Kurzweil sounds are made up. Um, each individual voice, or Kurzweil I'll call it a program, can be made of 32 different layers of sound and that makes up one individual voice or program as you might know it from different keyboards. Now you may have noticed halfway through that piece of music I pressed this button up here which is marked variation and what that did was add some strings into the piano voice. Now that's still classed as one individual sound so that's not layering two sounds together it's just one individual voice but because you've got 32 layers within one sound it gives you scope for making some really complex uh, textures and layers without needing to start layering sounds together if you kind of understand what I mean you don't need to be in multi mode which is another mode that I'll come to in a minute to be able to have more than one sound playing and it makes Kurzweil keyboards just so powerful so as another example of that if I change to one of the ensemble patches um, you'll hear this particular sound, it's an orchestral sound, has got so many different voices that um, are activated either with the keyboard split because some voices are only assigned to certain parts of the keyboard um, or some are triggered by the harder I press as well. So let's just play a few little chords with this particular sound. Just, just take a listen to this. <laughs> I think that's quite incredible that it's just one 
program, but there's so many textures and layers going on within one sound. So imagine how it's going to sound when you start layering these programs together to create a multi, which we will come to a little bit later on in the video. So there are over 1500 individual programs to choose from and they're all categorized. So over here you've got category buttons, so piano, electric piano, clav, organ, strings, pad, synth, brass and wind, ensemble, hybrid, guitar, bass, drums, percussion, you, you get it. They're, they're all categorized and it's very, very easy to get to your favorite sounds quickly. So first of all, you can make it so that when you press a category button, it automatically defaults to your favorite sound from that category. Now, when you get your K2700 out of the box, as an example, the first piano sound you get is called the Bristol piano. But my favorite piano sound is actually the Dynamic 9 foot grand. So what I've done is made it so that uh, the Dynamic 9 foot grand is the, is the sound that I get when I press the piano button. And it's very easy to do that. So what you do is you just select the sound you want and then you hold down the category button and it makes it your favorite sound within that category. So there are some really top quality sounds here. So just have a listen to uh, the electric piano. This is the first factory sound you get. It's called Steely Dino 77, but it's so responsive. I mean, I've got a Fender Rhodes myself, but I must say you get just as much fun and pleasure from playing this uh, Rhodes sound on the K2700 as I do with my real Rhodes. It's, it, it's quite, an amazing playing experience. So with so many different sounds available, Kurzweil have given you lots of different ways of finding the sounds that you need. So as I've already said, you've got the category buttons, which make it fairly easy, but you will notice that every single sound has a, a, an ID number, and you can actually just use these buttons here as a numerical keypad. So you just press the keypad button, dial in, for instance, 456, press enter, and it brings up sound number 456 which happens to be a pad sound in this case. Now, the other thing you can do is if you hold down the enter button and press one of the category buttons, you can then search for a particular sound, either by name or by number, but just type in any word or any few letters and it will find all of the sounds that contain those letters or words. So um, that's another very quick way if you're looking for a particular sound. So if you're looking for a harp, just do search for harp and it will bring up all the harp sounds. So if you're gonna be using the K2700 for live performance, then Kurzweil have put in a really useful feature for you and it's called the Quick Access Banks. And what this allows you to do is to select 10 of your favorite sounds, so whether they're programs or multis, and you can group them together and you can quickly access them using the category buttons here. So you can store 10 sounds and perhaps you're gonna use 10 sounds in one particular song. Um, and then store that as a group of sounds called a quick access bank. And you can store up to 50 of these banks. So if you want to change sound mid performance, it makes it very easy with just one button press over here. Now in this next example, I'm gonna do some more playing now. I've set up about six or seven different sounds into a quick access bank, and I'm gonna be changing them live mid performance. And what you'll notice is that the sound doesn't cut off either. So I can be playing one sound, switch to another one, and there's kind of a seamless transition between the two voices. So just here's a, another example of a few different sounds. Just have a listen to some of the orchestral sounds because they really are superb.
if you're intending to use a K2700 in a studio environment, then when you're in program mode, the channel up and down buttons here give you access to all 16 MIDI channels and you can assign a different sound to all 16 channels and you can just step through them very easily. So setting up to work with uh, MIDI sequencing software is very, very simple. So um, on channel one here, I have a piano. Channel two, I've got a bass sound. I've got a clav sound. And what you can also do is assign certain parameters to an expression pedal. So I've got a different clav sound here and it's got the wah uh, assigned to my expression pedal. And we have good synth sounds. K2700 also has Kurzweil's KB3 tone wheel organ generator built in, so that means you can get some really authentic organ sounds. Um, and when this particular sound engine is activated, the variation button switches between a fast and slow rotary speaker. Um, and the nine sliders here work your draw bars, so you can get this kind of sound. <laughs> So it is an authentic tone wheel sound. Also, as you've already heard, really great orchestral string sounds. This is the Studio A strings. Great synth pads. And if you're recording with a sequencer, you may even want some guitar sounds too. And of course there are drum kits as well, which are ideal for MIDI sequencing. If you want to split the keyboard, Kurzweil have made it very, very easy to set up your own keyboard splits and store them. Underneath the screen are six buttons called the soft keys. And when you've got any sound selected in program mode, you'll see that button three says split. So if I just press split, I've got an electric piano here. I press the split button. It quickly splits the keyboard into two and it automatically assigns a bass to my left hand. And if you want to change that sound, it's already highlighted on the screen, so you can just search for a different type of sound very, very easy. Very, very simple to do. If you want to change the split point, it's all very graphical on the screen. Um, so let's say I want to uh, make my piano at the moment is, is split at the F and the E. If I want to change that, I just go across, highlight, the F on the piano. If you hold down enter, you can then just press the key that you want to be the lowest uh, note of your right hand. And then we do the same, make the highest note of the, the lower zone again. So I'll do that. There we go. So now, and I've moved the split point. Very, very simple to do. And then when you're happy with your combination of sounds, you can just press the save button, which is already highlighted here and you choose somewhere to store it. So I press save and it stores it into one of the memory locations.
exactly the same thing applies if you want to layer two sounds together. Kurzweil have made that very easy too. I just select, it's for instance, a piano sound. Press the soft key, which is pointing to layer on the screen, and it automatically activates a second zone. And it's assigned strings to that zone. And over here, I've got the volume of the strings on slider number two, that's automatically assigned. Let's say you want to add a third sound to that. You just switch on zone number three there. And on the screen, I can come down to zone number three and choose a sound. So I'm going to select a choir sound. And again, that's assigned zone three to slider number three. Again, when you're happy with your layered voice, just press save, choose somewhere to save it and press save and that's stored. So creating your own splits and layered voices is very, very easy with the K2700. So the K2700 is a keyboard workstation and that means it's got multi-track recording facilities as well. So if we just move into song mode here, it's a 16 track MIDI sequencer. And what I really love about it is that it's a good old fashioned linear sequencer. So there's none of this looping patterns and stringing them together here. It's what we all know and love. You can just hit record and you can play. You can either play a complete song or you can just play a verse and then you can punch in and record the other bits later. But it's very, very simple sequencer to use. So I've just set up a new song here. I've got a piano sound there so I can just literally hit record and away we go. So I'm just going to do a four bar song just to quickly show you how simple the sequencer is to use. So it just asks me to save that. So after every recording it always asks you to save and we can just have a listen to that. So that recorded perfectly. So I can now go to my second track. See how simple this is. I can hit record, press play. And again, I will save that. Now let's move on to some drums. So we'll find my drum track, which is here. Slightly different with this, I'm gonna quantize the drums. So here we go. And I will save that. And let's have a quick listen. And now we will select, uh, let's have that wah clav that we heard earlier. Again, record. Slightly loose at the end of that, of course, but it's only an example here. And you can, of course, still play live over the top as well. So I have that sequence there and maybe a Hammond organ over the top. So it really is very, very simple to get your ideas down. And of course, from there, you can export your sequence, import it into your favorite uh, DAW software for even deeper editing. But if you are looking for a keyboard that's got an onboard sequence that's very, very simple to use, K2700 is really great from that point of view. So now I'd like to show you the multi-mode, but just before I do that, I'm just gonna to touch on the arpeggiator and the control sequencer because these actually come into their own when you're in multi-mode. So first of all, the arpeggiator is a traditional sort of classic keyboard arpeggiator. So I have a synth bass sound here. So from there, I can switch on the arpeggiator and I can select 
an arpeggiator pattern, so let's just have a default one. And then slider one there is opening and closing the filter. But you've also got a control sequencer as well. So if we go to control sequence, what this does is it opens and closes the filter automatically or it can adjust panning. In fact, there are lots of different uh, MIDI controllers that the control sequence can uh, sequence, if you like, to adjust the sound whilst you're playing. So if I choose a, a different sound here, um, let's have uh, just a sort of a classic synth. Classic synth sound there. If I switch on the control sequencer, and like with the arpeggiator, you choose a type of pattern. So um, I'm going to choose, um, let's have simple filter. And you'll hear now it's automatically opening and closing the filter for me. So you can create a kind of a rhythmic sequence of controllers. So I've changed to a different example. Let's change it to panning. So what it's going to do now is you'll hear the panning of the sound going between the two speakers. And of course you can change uh, the speed or the note values as well. So if I change that to quarter notes. So you can mix a control sequencer with the arpeggiator and there are lots of different arpeggiator patterns that are preset, but also you can program your own. And then you can also layer those as well when you're in multi-mode. So it really is quite a powerful tool. On its own, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but once you start getting into multi-mode, which I'm gonna show you in a second, you will hear how the arpeggiator really creates a nice big lush textures. Um, just one last thing to draw your attention to is on the far end here, you've got these pads. They can be used as drum pads, of course. So if I choose a, a drum patch, you can use those if you're programming a drum sequence, but also they can uh, be chord pads. So you can assign different chords to the pads like you may have seen on some other synths recently. Um, but also they can give you a visual indication of either the arpeggiator or the control sequencer. So you will see they, these come on, they light up when I'm in multi-mode and they start flashing in sequence and it gives you a visual indication of where you are within a control sequence or an arpeggiator pattern. So let's now switch over to multi-mode and I'm going to just show you some of the sounds that you can get from this when you start layering the sounds together. So as a start, here's a, here's a nice big lush synth pad. So that's one of the preset uh, multis and that's using three different sounds. Uh, if we choose something different, this is an orchestral sound um, with some brass and percussion. So as you heard earlier, the sounds just in program mode are very big, but when you move over to multi, they get even bigger. So you can get this kind of effect. So multi-mode is really very flexible. It's great for some synth pads, um, but also for some lead sounds and bass sounds. And there are some really great brass patches too. So as I touched on earlier, a multi sound can be split or layered on the keyboard and it can contain up to 16 different programs or individual sounds. So in this next example, I've got a piano with a pad on this area of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. 
On my left hand, I've got a synth bass, which will be uh, controlled by the arpeggiator. And if you notice on some of the titles of the factory presets, if it says A0 in brackets at the end of it, it means that the bottom note will always trigger a drum track. So if I just play that bottom key, it triggers the drum track. So I can play some piano, bring in the bass and the drums all together. So something like this. Another good example of a very similar kind of setup to that, again with bass on the bottom because it says A0 in the screen there. So that was just a run through on just a few of the factory presets just to kind of explain what you can do with this. But there are over 800 factory preset multi sounds in here and some of the programming is phenomenal. So what I thought I would do is just spend the next couple of minutes just playing through a few of these sounds and just take a listen to how rich uh, the, the synth pad textures are. I mean, it really is quite incredible. So just hope you enjoy these next few minutes of the video.
So finally, let's just quickly talk about the control panel layout that you have here on the K2700. Of course, you've got pitch bend and modulation wheels and you've got transpose buttons on the far left, which are very handy. You've got audio inputs on the back here and these two knobs here control the input gain and anything that you plug in through the audio inputs can be routed through the uh, the effects generator of the K2700 so you could plug a guitar in and use some of the chorus or distortion effects you could add uh, a reverb or delay to a vocal um, and of course all of this is output through the the audio in anything you plug into the audio in is output through the uh, standard audio outputs on the back here of which you've actually got two stereo pairs of outputs but also it comes out of the USB as well as audio so this actually acts as an audio interface so you can plug your mic or your guitar in route it through the effects and then record that into your favorite digital audio workstation software on your computer you have a really good control section here there are nine knobs nine sliders and nine buttons which allow you to uh, assign any one of us it's over a hundred different MIDI controllers to these knobs and sliders and I believe that's why so many players swear by Kurzweil keyboards because uh, they're so very flexible in what you can actually assign to the control panel so of course uh, they can do volume and filter cutoff and things but there are many many other controllers that you can assign to these and they can even be controlling external things via USB or MIDI as well so that brings me to the end of my K2700 overview. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a real pleasure to play this keyboard, I must say. It's an absolute monster of a keyboard with so much in there and, and it can work in so many different ways. If you want to get your hands on one yourself, at the time of making this video, we have them in stock here in Bonners in the UK. If you want to actually see one and try one, then it's usually on display in our South Coast showroom in Eastbourne. But we do have two other showrooms, one in Surrey and one in Milton Keynes, where you can see it by appointment. So give us a call. Just make sure the instrument is available in the branch that you want to come and try it out. If you have a keyboard already, we do offer part exchange. So uh, you'll find our contact details in the description to this video, so get in touch and let us know what you've got and maybe you'll be able to upgrade to a K2700. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next keyboard demonstration video.